Upgrading or changing your tires might just be the single biggest way that you can alter the riding characteristic of your mountain bike. Struggling on the climbs? Throw on some lighter, faster rolling tires and you'll feel like Superman. Feeling sketchy on those descents? Well, swap to a more aggressive rubber and you won't believe the results. And if you're lucky, you may just find a tire that makes both feel like a dream. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll know what to look for in your Goldilocks tire. So our goal today is to weed through the confusing jargon and marketing fluff around mountain bike tires and help you figure out what you should look for in your next tire. First, let's talk a little bit about terminology because there are a ton of choices you'll have to make when it comes to choosing a tire. First and foremost is your tire size and width, which is pretty self-explanatory. These days, most trail and enduro bikes are spec'd with a 2.3 inch to 2.6 inch tire. Some bikes, and specifically more cross-country oriented bikes, may come with a tire a little narrower than 2.3 inch, and we'll talk about why that might be a little later on the video. Another important thing to look at right off the bat is tubeless compatibility, because not all tires come tubeless ready. Schwabi denotes tubeless ready tires with either a TLE or TLR acronym that can be found on the side of the tire. Up next is the tire's casing, which is the part of the tire that sits under the rubber and gives the tire its shape, strength, and even some of its riding characteristics. Most mountain bike tires are available in different casings, ranging from light and supple to strong and stiff. For this video, we'll be using Schwabi tires for reference, but the same concept applies whether it's Maxxis, WTB, or another mountain bike tire brand. Schwabi makes a whopping five different types of casing, and ranging from lightest to heaviest, they are Super Race, Super Ground, Super Trail, Super Gravity, and Super Downhill. And while we're at it, I'll let you leave your favorite super pun down in the comments. As you move from race to downhill, you get a progressively stronger, but heavier and less supple tire. And what do I mean by supple? Essentially, how easily a tire absorbs bumps and vibrations from the trail. This is because as you move up the hierarchy, more materials are being added to the casing, which prevents the rubber from moving as freely, but it also protects it from punctures. Essentially, the heavier, more aggressive of a rider you are, the further you should move to the super downhill side of the spectrum. And lighter riders, or those who are riding a little less technical terrain, can lean a little bit more towards the super race side of the spectrum without having to worry too much about punctures. The third and final bit of terminology we need to cover before we move on to the tread pattern is the tire compound, which essentially is how soft or hard the rubber is. The softer the rubber, the more grip you'll have but the slower it will roll and faster it will wear. As you might imagine, the opposite is true of harder compounds. They have less rolling resistance and wear slowly, but have less grip. To maximize on the benefits of each, many tires will utilize two or more rubber compounds in their tires. Schwabi offers four different types of compounds under the Addict's name, and going from hardest to softest, they are speed, speed grip, soft, and ultra soft. And if toilet paper is any indicator in making the right choice, then you might know that ultra soft isn't always the best option. Now it's time for the fun stuff, talking about tread patterns. This is quite literally where the rubber meets the road and is actually the most important part when it comes to selecting the right tire for you. The protruding rubber bumps on your tires are called lugs, and they're usually referred to by their location, center lugs, side lugs, and transition lugs. Center lugs, as you might imagine, are what connect with the ground when you're riding upright and straight, and are primarily designed to provide traction while accelerating, climbing, and braking. These are also the lugs that have the greatest effect on rolling resistance. And while large, soft center lugs may provide exceptional grip, they'll also be very slow. Next are side lugs, which sit at the outer edge of the tire and are designed to provide grip while leaning into corners. Lastly, transition lugs are placed between the center and the side lugs and help to provide a smooth transition when moving from the center lugs to the side lugs in a turn. This is particularly helpful for riders who don't lean as aggressively into the corners, which would be full utilization of their side lugs. So now that you know your center lug from your side lug, let's talk a little bit about their shape and position. If you look at a mountain bike tire, you'll almost always find a variety of gaps, shapes, and sizes. And this isn't just for creative looks. 
The tighter the lugs are packed together, the faster a tire will roll, but the less grip it will provide. Common theme here, isn't it? Tighter lugs will also shed mud less easily. For this reason, center lugs will usually be a bit more bunched together with more spacing on the side lugs. In terms of shape, a lug that features a tapered face on its leading edge is called a ramped lug. These types of lugs, once again, help reduce rolling resistance, but they have slightly less grip and are usually implemented on some or all of the center lugs. Arrow-shaped lugs are called chevrons, and their long edges help maintain grip while cornering. You might also notice that some lugs have lines or grooves cut out of them. This is called siping and helps improve grip by increasing the lug's surface area and flexibility. Well, that's a whole lot of lugs with a whole lot of purposes. And to make the most out of said lugs, some riders will choose to use different tire tread patterns on the front and rear tire. In most cases, this is done to prioritize cornering grip up front and low rolling resistance in the back. This can be done by choosing a front tire with larger spaced out lugs and a back tire with a smaller, tighter tread pattern. The drawback to this type of setup is that the tire's handling can be slightly less predictable, and that's why some riders choose to go with the reliability that comes with specking the same tread pattern front and back. So, hopefully by now you've got enough tools to head over to bikesonline.com and find a tire that really is going to suit your riding needs. But for those of you wanting just a little bit more guidance, I'm going to share my top choices for XC, Trail, and Enduro tires, as well as what I'm currently running on my Polygon Siskiyou T9. Up first is XC. And if you've been following this video so far, you can probably guess that this is where we're looking for tires with a lighter casing, harder rubber compound, and smaller, tightly spaced lugs. These tires tend to be a bit narrower, as I alluded to earlier, to help further reduce the weight, and usually come spec'd about 2 inches to 2.25 inches. The Superior XP939, for example, comes with a 2.25 inch Schwabi Racing Ray up front and Racing Ralph in the back. Riders looking for a slightly grippier XC tire will like the Schwabi Knobby Nick, which is spec'd on Polygon's downcountry bike, the Siskiyou D. Next up, trail tires. And this is where you'll find the widest range of choice. Some riders will choose to run a faster rolling tire like the Knobby Nick on their trail bike, while others will go to the other end of the spectrum and spec one of the enduro tires we'll be talking about in a little bit. One of the best examples of a tire that splits the difference between these is the Schwabi Hans Domp. The Hans Domp features medium-sized, moderately spaced center and transition lugs for a mix of traction and low rolling, with large side lugs for maximal grip while cornering. A cool piece of mountain bike trivia that you can use to impress all your buddies on the next ride is that Hans Domp actually is a German expression for jack of all trades, which is a great description for this tire. It should go without saying then that the well-rounded performance is a perfect match for what I consider to be the most well-rounded bike on the market, the Polygon Siskiyou T-Series. Lastly, we've got some enduro and downhill tires where grip and strength take precedence over weight savings and low rolling resistance. As you'd imagine, we'll be looking for tires with a strong casing and a soft rubber compound. In terms of tread, we're looking for large, widely spaced knobs. The Polygon Colossus N9, a 170mm enduro bike, comes specced with a pair of Schwabi Magic Mary tires. Riders who are looking for a faster rolling option that splits the difference between the Magic Mary and the Hans Dampf should check out the Schwabi Tacky Chan. Last but not least, I want to share my personal tire choice on my Polygon Siskiyou T9. Personally, I run a Hans Dampf with a Super Trail casing and Attic Speed Grip in the back and a Magic Mary with the same casing but an Attic Soft compound in the front. I love the combination of the grip up front and the speed in the back, and it's a perfect combination for the dusty enduro trails I usually ride around my hometown of Bend, Oregon. But now is the time that I want to hear from all of you. What type of tires are you running now or have you run in the past and do you really like them or are you looking to maybe switch things up a little bit? In addition to that, if you have any questions that I didn't cover about mountain bike tires, please drop that in the comment. While you're down there, like and subscribe to the Bikes Online channel where I'll be hanging out. And after you've done that, get out there, get your tires going, and get ripping.